everyone, Just Ash here, and it's been quite a while since I've done a trope talk video, so today I thought I would talk you through what makes a Mary Sue. Now, Mary Sue is a derogatory term used to describe a particular type of character normally in fan fiction, and that is about all that anyone can agree on when it comes to this particular trope. In its most classic form, the Mary Sue, or Marty Stew if it's a male character, is an author's wish fulfillment character or self insert into a fan fiction. It's taken from the name of a character in a 1974 Star Trek fan fiction called The Trekkie's Tale, and it was originally written as a parody of the self insert fics that were around at the time. Nowadays, though, there also exists the phrase Canon Sue, and this basically applies the Mary Sue traits and tropes to characters that are in mainstream fiction. As this is such a subjective topic, I won't be including any examples in this video, however I will talk you through the traits that are most common when it comes to Mary Sue's. There are a few different types of Mary Sue's which I'll get to later in this video, however they all share the same common traits. Personality wise, they won't be very fleshed out, they might be a bit bland and a bit basic. But despite this stunning lack of personality, the other characters in the work are inexplicably drawn to her. Her ideas are always brilliant, her jokes are always funny, and she can do no wrong. Anyone who doesn't see her in this way is often portrayed as petty and jealous, and is quite often the villain of the work. Also, Mary Sue seems to possess some sort of commanding voice. I say this because her ideas and opinions are always right, and are always the ones the other characters decide to go with. This extends to even the most stubborn of character, who will find themselves agreeing with her almost instantaneously. Sue is flawless and incorruptible, and in fact some of the most Sue-ish Sues are completely unaware of even the concept of temptation. Any flaws that Mary Sue does have will all be informed flaws, they will have no bearing on the plot whatsoever, and are simply there to try and get the label of Mary Sue off her. However, despite these so-called flaws, she's still seen as perfect, they're just there so that she can turn on the angst and get even more attention from the other characters. And on top of all of this, the author of the Mary Sue often doesn't know how to hold the character back. This means that any time Mary Sue encounters a situation that would provide adversity, she simply steamrolls straight through and is often praised by other characters for doing this, especially if it involves breaking the rules. As for the way a Mary Sue looks, they are often so beautiful it is a curse. Now, being an attractive character doesn't automatically equal Mary Sue, but when it is portrayed as a disadvantage, where she's so beautiful she can't get things done because men are literally falling head over heels for her all the time, that's a sure sign of Sue-ness. Her beauty will often be commented on by other characters, whether the reader wants it or not, and when she's described in the narrative it's often with extreme purple prose. Have you ever read about a character described as a slender yet strong, delicate woman with a waterfall of raven hair that shimmers in the sunlight, tumbling down to her hips, her luscious locks beautifully framing her heart-shaped face, with doe-like eyes that are the colour of sapphire mixed with an evening ocean, and glisten like a pool in the midday sunshine, framed by her thick, luscious lashes. That is a Mary Sue description right there. And, and small side note, while I was writing that description, I literally couldn't stop giggling because I've read so many fanfics that have pretty much that exact thing written in it. The reason for this is the author often has a very specific idea of what their Mary Sue looks like, and they make sure the audience is very much aware of that as well, and also sees them the same way. Purple is also a colour that is often associated with Mary Sue's, this seems to be because purple is associated with a lot of very exotic traits, such as royalty, power, and even the supernatural. And of course, absolutely no effort goes into keeping Mary Sue's perfect beauty. She will never look ugly or dirty, and at the very best will only ever be reduced to an unkempt beauty, and this is only after a particularly taxing battle. Speaking of battle, Mary Sue will often have some sort of exotic weapon, or a weapon that the author thinks is particularly cool. Whether or not it fits in with the setting of the story is irrelevant. Katanas are almost always a dead giveaway here, as are things like magical jewellery, double handguns, especially if they're rare guns, or anything that is related to a one-of-a-kind artefact or weapon within the canon story. For example, in a Lord of the Rings fanfiction, it would be a beautiful elf girl who has a ring of power that mysteriously makes her invisible as well, yet doesn't corrupt her and she is never tempted by it, and it is super easy for her to throw it in Mount Doom at the end. Skills-wise, Sue is the best, even if her skills are poorly defined and don't really make sense within the story. She will always have the same skills as the canon characters, and in fact will have mastered them quicker, and be better at them. 
If there is a new skill that needs to be learned for the plot, she will master it straight away or she'll already have it and just suddenly remember that she can do that. Again, she will experience no side effects or downsides of these powers and is also not bound by any of the same limitations that appear in canon. Other skills that Mary Sue's have often include things like a beautiful singing voice, inexplicable musical talent, knowing several, if irrelevant, languages that the author simply thinks is cool, and having a stellar fashion sense. And you better believe that all of her outfits are going to be described with the same lavish purple prose as Mary Sue herself. And quite often these outfits are impractical or unbelievable for the situation, setting and scenario that Mary Sue has found herself in. In fan fiction, Mary Sue will often find herself paired off with a canon character regardless of any canon relationships. If the love interest is involved in a relationship, don't worry, the author will find a way to deal with her, whether that is killing her off, ignoring her existence entirely, or simply turning her into an unlikable shrieking harpy. Other characters will quickly become obsessed with Sue, often praising her even when she is not there. Anyone who doesn't share this view is portrayed as petty and jealous and is often the bad guy. They can be redeemed, however, and as soon as they're redeemed, they will see Mary Sue for the true goodness and beauty that she is. And finally, Mary Sue will often have a dark and tragic backstory. Whether this is parental abandonment, being an orphan, or something darker and edgier, I can guarantee that it will have no bearing on the plot whatsoever, apart from allowing Mary Sue to angst over it and get even more attention from the other characters. Mary Sue may also be a chosen one, even if the canon already has a chosen one, she's either the better chosen one or they can work the prophecy around her somehow. And of course she has special snowflake syndrome, which means she has a unique backstory or trait that separates her from the rest of her group or her race depending on the fan fiction. For example, this would be an elven princess being raised by humans and not knowing elvish culture. She'll also have an exotic multi-part name and quite often these are either Japanese names or they just sound vaguely made up depending on what the author thinks is cool at the time. Now, having all these traits doesn't necessarily make a character a Mary Sue, it's all about the presentation. If there is a perfectly good, logical reason as to why a character has these traits within a story, then that's fine, that character's probably not a Sue. However, you do have to be careful. There are a couple of different types of Mary Sues that don't necessarily have all of these traits that aren't traditionally associated with being a Mary Sue. These include things like Black Hole Sues who will warp the entire canon to fit her, God Mode Sues who have unlimited power, and Copycat Sues, which are basically the author's favourite character, but even better. And there is also the Anti Sue. This is basically where an author is aware of what a Mary Sue is, and decides to do the exact opposite of it. However, the characters still react as though she was a traditional Mary Sue, the plot still ties itself in knots trying to accommodate what is now a functionally useless character, so unfortunately that still counts as a Mary Sue as well. So I hope this video has helped you identify what a Mary Sue is and isn't. Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, remember to give it a like, and as always, join me next Friday at 8 for the next video.